This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. There's been a lot of negative news around Tesla's autopilot system lately, and one of its owners just got hit with felony charges by prosecutors in California for a fatal accident that occurred while his vehicle was operating on autopilot. This is the first time in the U.S. charges have been filed against a driver using a partially automated driving system. The driver is being charged with two counts of vehicular manslaughter after his Model S ran a red light at a high rate of speed and hit another car, killing both people inside. The charging documents don't mention autopilot, but NHTSA has confirmed that autopilot was being used at the time of the crash. A preliminary hearing for the accident, which occurred in 2019, is set for the end of February. NHTSA is also conducting a separate investigation into autopilot involving several accidents where Teslas crashed into parked emergency vehicles. About three years ago, Ford invested $500 million in Rivian. Now that investment is worth $8.2 billion, and Ford is going to book that as part of its fourth quarter earnings. So we need to keep that in mind when the company reports those earnings on February 3rd, because otherwise, the numbers are going to make your eyes pop out of your head. And we're still sticking to our prediction that at some point, Ford will dump its stock in Rivian to pay for Blue Oval City, that massive EV manufacturing complex it's building in Tennessee. The Formula One circus has been abuzz with rumors that Audi and Porsche are going to join the series, but they'll have to buy an existing team. Zach Brown, the CEO of McLaren Racing, admits he's been in talks with Audi, and he says the rumor mill indicates that Porsche has been talking with Red Bull Racing. Nothing would happen until 2026, which is when F1 regulations could require renewable fuels and a much greater emphasis on electric power. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Electric Last Mile Solutions, or ELMS, is expanding its lineup of electric delivery vehicles. Last year, it rolled out a small Class 1 van with an MSRP of only $30,000. With a federal tax credit, that drops to only $22,500. But it doesn't meet U.S. crash standards, which means it can only operate in places like gated communities or college campuses. Later this quarter, however, ELMS is coming out with an improved version of the Class 1 van that may not win any styling awards, but does meet U.S. crash standards. The van is made from knockdown kits from Wuling in China and is assembled by ELMS at its plant in Indiana. In the second half of this year, ELMS will start building this Class 3 delivery truck. It's assembled from kits made by SAIC in China. And ELMS is also getting lithium iron phosphate batteries from cattle. Unlike other startups using a direct sales model, ELMS lined up about 10 dealers in the U.S. to handle distribution and service. It hoped to sell 20,000 vans and trucks in the U.S. this year, but it's running into supply chain problems and shipping costs from China have skyrocketed. Even so, it hopes to be on track by the end of the year. As automakers transition to electric vehicles, development times are being slashed. But one way to speed up is to first design things digitally. So Renault is taking a path we've seen others follow before, and that's to design vehicles using virtual reality. 3D sketching involves using a VR headset and controllers, which allows multiple designers to work on the same project at the same time. This not only saves time, it makes it easier to experiment on designs. Renault is currently rolling out the system to its design departments and is working to make improvements, including a mixed reality system that blends real and virtual worlds. Having your car stolen is bad enough, but having things stolen out of your car can be just as infuriating. So Ford is forming a joint venture with ADT, the security services company. They're going to equip cars with acoustic sensors, cameras, radar, LTE, and GPS 
to stop thieves before they can steal anything out of your vehicle. It uses artificial intelligence to identify credible threats and sends the owner an alert who can then tell thieves that they're being watched. ADT will also be notified and it can alert the police too. The system will be smart enough to ignore things like a cat jumping on your vehicle or loud construction nearby. Ford says lots of people store tools and valuable equipment in their vehicles and will be interested in the service. The joint venture between Ford and ADT is called Canopy and will be compatible with many brands and models. The service starts in 2023, but no word yet on what it will cost. Mobility is becoming electric, connected and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But will always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. There's a lot of activity involving batteries today, and first up, Volkswagen and Bosch announced they're teaming up to help boost battery cell production in Europe. They plan to supply integrated battery production systems, on-site ramp-up, and maintenance support for battery cell and battery system manufacturers. VW and Bosch plan to set up a joint venture for the business by the end of the year. Over in China, BYD and FAW have also formed a joint venture to develop and manufacture batteries and battery systems for EVs and energy storage. They'll open a plant with a capacity to produce 45 gigawatt hours of batteries a year, which will be enough to provide 1 million batteries for BYD's new energy vehicles. And here in the U.S., Nikola announced it signed a deal with Proterra to use its battery systems in its Tray BEV and Fuel Cell Class 8 semi-trucks. The first trucks equipped with Proterra's batteries will go into production by the end of the year. And in the last bit of battery news, Honda announced its partnership with SES Holdings, a Boston-based EV battery research and development company, to jointly research next-gen batteries. SES plans to go public through a SPAC merger, and once it does, Honda will acquire a 2% stake in the company. General Motors claims it developed the electric Chevrolet Silverado in only 24 months. That's half the time it used to take. So what kind of technology and process did GM use to slash that time? Or is it just that much easier to develop an electric vehicle? That'll be one of the topics we get into on AutoLine After Hours tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Time with Nicole Kratz, the chief engineer of the Silverado. Joanne Muller from Axios will also be on the show. So join John and Gary for a front row seat on how this electric pickup truck actually got developed. And speaking of GM, it's making its parts catalog available online. Through its AC Delco and GM Genuine Parts brands, it has more than 45,000 repair and maintenance parts for purchase. And those are now available in a new online marketplace. Customers can have their parts delivered at home or at a participating dealer and can even earn rewards points. Another benefit is the knowledge you're getting the right part for your vehicle. This is just one part of GM's digital e-commerce plan. In the future, it will offer parts, accessories, digital products, and subscriptions delivered through over-the-air updates through a single digital storefront. For example, performance upgrades or supercruise could be added through this marketplace. And it's no wonder why GM would want to get involved when it forecasts sales of parts and accessories will generate $40 billion by 2030. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be right back here again tomorrow. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game, and by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.